Today's recipes focus on a Middle Eastern theme. Regina prepares a savory vegetable strata with garden fresh produce and the traditional tastes of the region. Guest chef Raz makes a delectable cactus sauce for his tasty lentil cakes. If sustained energy throughout the day is your goal, don't miss today's healthful libation. And wine expert David Berkeley makes his selection of the week. Today's program is heavily influenced by both the cuisine and the ingredients of the Middle East. We're going to start out with a wonderful vegetable strata from the Mediterranean that's going to be utilizing some lemon peel, some turmeric, a lot of different vegetables, and then we'll finish it off with some macadamia nuts, also some raisins, and put a little bit of the sweetness and different textures in here that you wouldn't normally find outside of Middle Eastern cuisine. We're going to start off with sauteing a little bit of onion, actually not a little bit, a couple of onions, Quite a bit of onion because we're going to be layering it between these other vegetables and we'll saute it or sizzle it in a little bit of vegetable broth till it begins cooking down and this is going to take three or four minutes to get them soft enough to where we can add the other ingredients okay the onions have softened up and now we're going to add a little bit of olive oil about three or four tablespoons of olive oil and you can use either freshly grated lemon peel, you can use dried lemon peel, or even a little bit of candied lemon peel. And this one, a little sweet is okay. And just for kicks, we're going to use a little bit of candied lemon peel. And the spicing, classically Middle Eastern, want some turmeric and a good presence. This is going to color the dish and flavor it as well. So a couple of teaspoons of turmeric here. And we'll go with about a teaspoon of salt go and then finally six ounces of tomato paste and we'll want to thin this out just a little bit with the broth in a moment and let this simmer for just a moment or two and then set it aside and we'll begin layering this between the vegetables better be careful with the turmeric or it's going to permanently stain your clothing Okay, we'll start layering the vegetables now and we'll start with potatoes. You can use any potatoes on hand. In fact, the lovely thing about this particular dish is you can use any vegetables on hand. Anything you have in the refrigerator, this is sort of like a ratatouille in that sense. Just go ahead and start the process of putting your thinly sliced vegetables. You don't want anything more except for the eggplant, which is about a third of an inch thick. All the other vegetables, about a quarter of an inch, not much more than that. So we put a layer of potatoes in first, and you'll see it, we don't need to oil this pan. You'll see why in just a moment. And then we do our first layer of the onion mixture and just spread it around evenly. You don't have to have too thick a layer because you want plenty to go around on each of the layers so they're saturated with the turmeric and with the onion and the tomato. And then for each layer, you also want to put a little bit of freshly grated black pepper. Okay, and some parsley. And we'll continue with carrots next. And we have these lovely carrots that Raz was kind enough to prep for us in the back. Nice and thinly sliced carrots are just beautiful. It's a really pretty dish and extremely healthful. Very little fat in the dish outside of that original bit of olive oil you saw in the onion mixture. The rest is just vegetables and loads of flavor. And again, Put this in the middle and then we're going to add an ingredient that you can leave out if you wish. Some people are not accustomed to the sort of sweet, the little sweet punctuations in Middle Eastern cuisine. I like the juxtaposition of the sweet with the vegetables. So in this particular dish I'm preparing today, I'm going to use a red flame raisin. You can see these are plump, juicy raisins and they're going to plump up even more because we're topping this whole thing off with the broth. It's all going to be cooked in here on the stovetop. So we'll just sprinkle around some nice flame raisins and again some pepper and parsley. Parsley here and the salt's already in the, the mixture that I made to begin with, with the tomato paste. And now we have a layer of eggplant, and this has already been sweated with a little bit of salt on it that peels off, skin removed. And just one layer, about a quarter to a third of an inch thick. You kind of get the idea here with this layering by now. 
and we'll just smear a little bit of this around and this will move around a bit. These flavors, if you don't get it completely out to the edges, it's okay. These flavors are going to migrate once we start pouring the liquid over the top of it. And we're going to put some roasted red peppers. You can put any kind of, you can use plain bell peppers. In fact, maybe we'll do a mixture here. You can use plain bell peppers or red, any kind of peppers you have on hand. If you have a jar of pre-roasted bell peppers, go with those. Put this on for color. There we go. And another little bit of green in there. And the last little bit. Okay, now what we have to add to this so that we can have this cook in its own juices is a little bit of vegetable broth. And let me go ahead and put the rest of the parsley on while we're at it. And in the vegetable broth, I'm going to put some lemon juice, which is a, a classic Middle Eastern ingredient with vegetable dishes. Stir it around just a little bit. And we'll drizzle this over the top, cover it up, and then cook it on the stove top for about 40 minutes until all the flavors are melted together. This will make sure the vegetables are nice and soft when it's all done. Et voila, it's a beautiful dish, very simple to make and really high in flavor, healthful, it has it all. So let's cover this up and put this on the stove top and leave it alone for about 40 minutes over a medium low flame. And we have a special guest today for our smoothie, Lawrence Curtis, who's a local artist and a friend of mine here. And I turned Lawrence on to smoothies about a month ago. Isn't that about how long you've been making your protein smoothies? That's true, about and, a month. And so, okay, so tell us about what it's done for your life, Lawrence. Oh, it's completely <laughs> changed it? my life, <laughs> completely. I'm a different person. I, I actually, I like it. I have at least one meal a day is a smoothie now. And it's great because I don't have to cook. So I have one meal of a smoothie. And I hadn't even I... thought about the bachelor angle, but yeah, it makes go. perfect sense. Well, the one we're making today, I think you'll like it. You can add this to your repertoire, although I think you probably have to stock up a little bit. This particular drink is based on an old Ayurvedic formula, which is for sustained energy. And at its base is almonds. Now, we're using almond milk. We're using fresh almonds. We're going to use a little extract from almonds as well, just to get a really pumped up almondy flavor in here. But we are adding a couple things that are not in the original recipe such as tofu to get some extra protein in as well. So in this one, I'll start out by pouring a little bit of milk in here and then have you, why don't you add a handful of almonds up there. Handful of almonds. Depending, Try saying no that. No more than that. No more than that. No, more than oh, that. Oh, more than that. <laughs> there you go. Not no That's more it. than that. That's it. A handful of almonds. And then this particular drink has some of the spices that tend to perk up your energy a little bit. And here we're using cinnamon and I nutmeg. Know. The original recipe, the original recipe also has black pepper in it, but I thought that might be a little bit of a stretch. You can add black pepper. I like the way it tastes in this drink. And then here, have you ever done this? No, but I'm about to. Yeah, you're about to. Okay, <laughs> what is this? That's nutmeg, and that's a nutmeg, nutmeg grater. Just run it down that way. That's fine. Oh, but it's Fresh. fun. It I want to do more. Okay, you can play over here a little bit. <laughs> Don't take a side and play. <laughs> and then we're going to add honey to it for sweetener. And we'll have to approximate, but you're going to want about, oh, two teaspoons here. I think that should do it. And we have protein in the form of powder. We can add a little bit of protein, just a half a scoop or so, because we'll also be adding some tofu to it. And these are both optional. The drink is wonderful on its own with just the almonds and the milks. But I like to add a little bit of protein powder. And just for kicks, we'll add some tofu. You can get your phytonutrients, which everybody's talking about, and tofu, and a little bit of additional plant-based protein. And let's see, oh, the extract, just a little bit. You don't want to put too much. Almond extract is very strong. And how about some ice cubes? Some ice cubes? Yeah. Ice cubes. More. More handfuls of ice cubes. Handfuls of ice cubes. Whoops, ice That's cubes it. everywhere. That should do it. And let's see how this one turns out today. Since we never measure anything, we never know for sure. How it's going to turn out. Whoa! <laughs> 
with this one, you just want to make sure that the almonds are all ground up. Otherwise, you have chunks instead of just little granular pieces in the bottom of your glass, which is my favorite thing about using almonds in these drinks, is I like the little, the little coarse bits that you can chew up at the bottom of the glass. For you, darling? Yes, let me see. Hmm. I'm going to taste, taste it first, see if we need any more honey. Okay. Mm -mm. No? Don't need any more honey. This is a very lightly sweetened drink. Tell me what you think of that. Very almondy. Oh, that's nice. Isn't that nice? That's really good. Yeah, yeah not cheers. too sweet. Cheers. As they say in England, bottoms up. And now I'm here with Raz, and we're going to be using some classically Middle Eastern or even international um, ingredients, such as a variety of lentils, to make your own twist on a lentil cake. And you call your cuisine in your restaurant? Contemporary International. There we go. That pretty much encompasses Covers the entire. everything. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, I mean, it could be a Middle Eastern dish, except we are going to have a very special application to it because we're going to be using cactus. Now this is this is something that is certainly um, a child of the southwest and we're going to be putting a sweet and sour with this. If That's I'm correct. That with right? the, so that it, it sort of gives you a little twist of three different cultures over here. You know you have the Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. the Southwest and you have a little bit of the oriental culture, including, you know, introducing some of the sweet and sour flavor. Oh, that's it. right, the sweet and sour. Okay, well, why don't we get going on this? Because it looks like we have several steps. What are we going well, to start with? Well, the first with? thing that we're going to do is that we're going to start doing the, the basics sweet and of sour? this. That's correct. And for that, we'll take some sugar and we'll take a little bit of vinegar. It could be a little bit of red wine vinegar okay. or our own vinegar that we make that is mm -hmm. made out of fresh berries and fresh mm -hmm. herbs. Nice infused. So, enough just to dilute this sugar. So you don't want here. it too watery here. No, because you want it, you you want to be able to cook this fast. One of the rules that we have in our place is that we want to make sure that when people is learning how to cook this, mm -hmm. it has to be simple, fast, and you know, and and, and that's achievable. what we like on our program. That too. is it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want your people to start slaving on the stove well, while the guests are just hanging around having a good time, you know, <laughs> drinking and or more likely not bothering at all because it's too complicated. That's correct. So all what we're going to do is that that's one of those things that you'll just leave by itself. Okay. It, the sugar starts melting. Okay. And little by little, it starts caramelizing. Okay. And once it reaches the point of caramelization is when we're going to finish so it So we up. don't need to watch that. We don't need to watch this pot boil. We can just no, let it No, sit. right now, until it starts really bubbling. Okay. And then you have to be very careful. Okay. And we'll talk about that in a, li in a little bit. So we have over here another fry pan. We'll put a little bit of olive oil, not too much. And we're gonna make sure that, it, that it's hot. And to the olive oil pan, we're gonna add some onions. And then something that is not written in your recipe, but I always tell people that a little touch of garlic. Yes. And yes, because you know we like to use garlic on a lot of, of our dishes. Okay, so on our recipe today, we're using three different varieties of lentil. This is the most common lentil, the brown lentil mm -hmm. that you find in the stores. Right where all the beans are always laying around, that's right. what you find over there. When you go to the specialty, specialty stores, you know, Middle Eastern stores, right. then you find different varieties. This is what they call the red-orange lentil. And it's split already. It's like a split pea. Mm -hmm. And then you have the, the toughest one to cook, that is a French green a lentil French green that lentil. takes the longest. Okay. So whenever you're cooking this, you have to remember that the longest one to cook is the one that you start first, or you can cook them all separate. Okay. So. Now what's happening back there? I see your sugar okay. water is bubbling. It's bubbling. Oh, that is good to show you. So the sugar water is bubbling over here. As you can see, what it's doing is that it's reducing the moisture. Okay. And once the moisture evaporates, it starts caramelizing. That means that it starts turning brown. Right. That is the moment that we want to wait okay, for. Okay, I'll keep cheese. my eye on that while you're telling us what and you're then doing right here. right over here, we have the onions and a touch of garlic. And to that, we're going to add the dice-up nopalito cactus. Once again, you know, no palace. It's right. just nature of the Southwest and actually all over South America you find them. Actually, you can find them in grocery stores in just a little bit. We're, we have some in the yard. We'll go over there and show you how prominent they that are correct. in on this the, area. On the, Hispanic, on the Hispanic aisles, you always find them in the yards already cooked. The yeah. only thing that I don't like to use the ones in the yards is that the color is already gone. This but true, in the produce up. section, where you find all your specialty produce items, you know, herbs and different spices mm -hmm. that you find on the produce section, you find the smaller ones, like that one. You do. Well, you certainly do in the Southwest, but... Actually, all over the country. I found them in New York. I found them in Chicago. Good. So, you know, it's just one of those things that is actually becoming very popular. Good. Thanks to shows like this that is showing yes. people how 
you know, to use them. them. We're at Lowell's house next door, and look at this mature old cactus. And you can see, I see what you're talking about. These obviously are not succulent, tender, young No, they are cactus. not. They are a different variety, but mm -hmm. they are still edible, and you mm -hmm. have to be a lot more careful because of yes. all the prongs these and are, the things. These are lethal. And it's late in the season already, right. so they tend to be dry. And then you have the fruit. The fruit mm -hmm. is actually very good, and it's used in all varieties of dishes, in baking, sauces, mm -hmm. and drinks. Right. Very popular. Very popular. It has a lot of seeds in it, but it has a really beautiful color. Magnificent really, color. It's kind of like pomegranate right. and beet <laughs> juice. It's really pretty. Okay. <laughs> Okay, back to the kitchen. So now that this is sauteed like this, we're just gonna set it aside. Okay. And we're gonna wait for our sauce. That makes you see what we're going to do with this. Our so sauce over here, you see now it's starting to, I don't know if you can notice, but you know, it's very hard over here. But there is a little bit of the edges that is starting to take some color to it. Mm -hmm. So that becomes, what it means is that the moisture is being, you know, consumed already cooked out and now it's going to start you know giving us some color and to finish this sauce it's just going to be very simple we're going to take lime juice okay that is what it's going to give us this sour mm -hmm. out of the sugar with well, along with a little bit of the vinegar of the, the tart vinegar. and then we're going to finish it up with our chili paste okay and did course, you make this you're going to ask now about chili paste yes, yes we course. actually <laughs> make chili paste we make it a latino express that is our little version of gourmet South American fast food. Okay, and how do you make a, a chili and paste? This then? is something that we cook. We cook six different kinds of chilies with our vinegar, onions, and garlic. And we stew this for at least six hours, and then we puree. I'm just pouring a little bit in here so we know. can see the yes. texture. Yes, and I don't know how you are taking heat. Moderate heat. So I do I like heat. So just... I won't let you try this then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're gonna try it afterwards when okay. we put it in the sauce, and then you'll see the combination of okay. the sweet and sour and the, and you the know, heat. and the heat. So you see, now we're starting to get almost to that point where we're getting the caramelization out of this, you know, sauce. And it looks like we have a nice thick bubbling sauce. It's That's just it. beginning the caramelization. That is the point that we want to start over here. And now, what we do make, what we, when we reach, we reach this point. What we have to do is make a decision: how dark of a color do we want in okay. this? So if we want something really dark in mm -hmm. color, we continue to cook it until it starts, you know, turning darker in color. Actually, for this recipe, I'm trying to, you know, get a little lighter color okay. so that we can actually see the ingredients that we're putting in. So we're putting our nopales with the onions into the pan, and then very careful because this is going to splatter. Right. Remember, lime, we're gonna fresh put lime, lime juice, and you see, mm -hmm. we're staying away from that because you see that it's starting to to splatter everywhere. We put the rest. Even the bee that had just joined our party flew away. <laughs> you see that? So now look, we're having a nice little color over here, and now okay. we're going to give it a little bit of a A little heat. bit. It sounds like a lot of heat. Oh, no. It smells this great. Is, it, is, it is a great, great dish. Mm. So look, now that we have this sauce, it's sweet and sour, mm -hmm. and it's already mixed, we can just go ahead and set it aside. OK because we are not going to cook it any longer. OK, and now the lentil cakes start coming together. That's correct. And while he's starting to put these ingredients in, I just wanted to share with you that his family in Venezuela, in Caracas, Venezuela, has had a vegetarian restaurant for, geez, coming up on 30 years now, haven't they? Amazing. So huh? he has a steep tradition in vegetarian cuisine. And this dish we're making today can be totally vegan, which is what we're doing using um, some tofu at the base, or you can use eggs at the base. It's your choice. Either way, it tastes fabulous. OK, now, where do we go from here? So we have the red lentils. Okay. That is the fastest cooking one. And then, you know, of course, we have the tofu. It's about a half a cup of tofu, something yeah. like that. Almost a half a cup, the equivalent of the two eggs for the people who okay. are not lacto-vegetarians. Right, you know, so it would be about a half eggs. a cup. So the thing now to do is just to blend them so that it's, you know, sort of blends together. Hold, hold, hold that one second, shut it off. Yep. There you go. So that the, the tofu can just blend together. Okay. There we are. So while that is being pureed, we'll take the rest of the lentils. That will be our French green lentils and our real brown lentils. So we'll take now our mixture that is already being pureed. And this is what is going to give us the consistency to this dish to be able to pat them and make them into little patties. You may see something else over there that will help hold it together. The breadcrumbs, bread crumbs, yes. yes. And 
you know, breadcrumbs, then you're going to have a lot of people who is always going to ask you about what kind of breadcrumbs to use. Does you know, it the matter? Best thing? Actually, it does. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Italians have the tendency to use stale bread mm -hmm. and to use the entire thing brown and white, the mm -hmm. whole thing. But that has the tendency to make every, anything you're cooking, you know, already obtain some color. Mm -hmm. We like to use white, dry breadcrumbs, oriental style. That's what they call panko, mm -hmm. panko breading. Mm -hmm. That's what the orientals use to make all their, you know, Do you buy these dishes. or do you make, prepare them yourself? Actually, we buy them now. Okay. We used to prepare them ourselves. You know, we used to just take our bread, take the crust off, dry it out, right. and then shred it. You see that this yes, one is not ground completely? Yes. That's what makes, you know, nicer because right. it, it allows it to absorb moisture. Okay, so are we putting this in now? Well, we're going to put the rest of the ingredients over okay. here, a little bit of carrots and celery and a little bit of peppers. What kind of peppers to use? Well, it looks like red, Any it looks like green, anything. It looks like you have a little onion in there or something uh -huh. too. A little, a little bit of onions, a little yeah. bit of chives and green onions. Okay, good. Okay, and then we'll add a little bit of our breadcrumbs. Let's put some salt and pepper. Always Let's make see. sure that everything is seasoned. Tell me when you want me to stop. This is a little bit of a coarse grain. I probably will never tell you to stop because <laughs> I like black pepper okay, on my stuff. Okay, there we stuff. go. <laughs> That's good. Okay. So now we have this thing, but you know, the truth is that the best way to mix this is it's with the hands. You take your hands so that you can actually give it the consistency that you are looking for. So why don't you take a little bit of that olive oil and put it in this pan that is already nice Just and Just tell hot. me when you want me to stop here. Well, it depends on how okay. crispy you want this cakes. Well, I think that looks like it's about right. Okay. And then we're going to start forming the cakes. And we have some nice crispy lentil cakes. We're going to put them around the side of some jasmine rice that's been cooked because... Because we can actually serve this dish with rice. And also the and rice goes really well with Oh, that. with the nopalito okay. cactus sauce. Okay. You know, you're going to see this. So now we'll take these three beautiful little cakes. Okay. They are nice and crispy. Yum. And then how, what are we going to do? And then we'll take this pan, put it aside. Okay. Just trying to turn this off <laughs> so I don't burn myself. And let's get a spoon. Ooh, and then lovely. what we do is that we'll take our sauce. Just beautiful. While he continues drizzling the sauce over the top. Let's go to David Berkeley and find out what he would serve with these beautiful lentil cakes. Regina, I'm a fan of lentils as well. Red, green, yellow, served as a salad, side dish, main course, whatever, it doesn't matter. Now we oftentimes do a dish like this with finely diced carrots, celery, and onions but we will substitute feta for the tofu, and then we'll dress it with a vinaigrette. Now, I, I can't really say that I've ever had a pear cactus sauce with my lentils, but usually with my lentil dish, I like a medium weight red wine, something like a wine from the Rhone Valley. Now, I'm not talking about one of those expensive, complex wines like Hermitage, Coroti, or even a Chateauneuf de Pop, but rather a simple Côte de Rhone. These wines are made from Syrah, Grenache, Morvedra, Sanso, Carignan. Typically, they're somewhat savory and juicy, and they're very reasonably priced, oftentimes coming in at under $10 a bottle. Now, while they have great distribution throughout the nation, if you can't find one, look for a wine from this group of wine producers in California known collectively as the Rhone Rangers. They make wines from Rhone grape varieties that are very similar in style, and I'm sure your wine merchant can put you onto one of those. We have it all finished off with some of Raz's edible flowers, which is a real passion of yours. And Absolutely. As you say, a feast for the eyes first, and then everything tastes wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Raz. Until next time, fun day. To find out more about Regina's vegetarian table, visit our PBS online website at pbs.org.